tedious subject performative activism and also has wokeness become a trend leave us alone your service <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah um like i mentioned earlier i'm joined with i'm joined by hey i'm so i was hungry <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's how do you say that as mentioned earlier i'm joined by my lovely guest allegria and nunya and we're just gonna get into it really just see what they're Take is on the topic, and I know I have a lot of views on the topic, but we're going to get into it, um, and obviously we're going to eat in the process, and at the end they're going to let you know how good my food is. Like, I'm not going to say like they need to rate it out of 10, because we already know I'll be laying it down <laughs> in the kitchen, but yeah, <laughs> let's get into it. Right, so like I've mentioned already, look how I'm holding table knife, no manners. <laughs> I really don't use a knife to eat, let me be me. Um, right, so like we said, performative activism. Um, I feel like this week especially, it's been crazy because the whole picture with Kim Kimball, um, Kim Kimball and Nicki Minaj and that whole thing has Sorry come up. And, um, and I just think it's just something we need to talk about because it's a thing where a lot of people are, you know, they're woke and they're, 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 they're saying, oh, I'm an activist and I'm fighting for x y and z but are they really doing it because they actually care about these things or are they dealing with other things that they need to just be calling a spade a spade and um i mean i would say in regards to the image so with miles i followed him for a while um okay. maybe like four or five years now and what i would say is one thing i would note is that miles has never posed himself as an activist doesn't call himself one mm. but he does I guess write about things that would otherwise make people uncomfortable or he at least tries to unpack things that we think are uncomfortable. Mm. I think what happens is in duality, it's a mixture of whilst that image isolated from any context yeah. is problematic in and of itself, yeah. at the same time, we do the autonomy of the people in the picture a disservice by deciding that, okay, we put a dark-skinned woman, she's in a position of servitude. Mm. And it's not Kim Kimball herself, it's one of her stylists she has on payroll. Regardless, I'm just chilling. Like she's doing Nicki Minaj's mm. hair. Maybe she did Beyonce's hair yesterday. Maybe she's gonna do like, I don't know, Beyonce's mum's hair tomorrow. Like she's enjoying herself. Mm. I think there's still this, it's this weird balance of one, not caring too much about the white gaze, but at the same time being aware of how they may digest it if it's on their platform. Yeah. That being said, you also have to ask yourself, is this something we would have thought of had it not been mentioned? If not, then you have to ask if you're projecting. Because I think projecting yeah. is a massive problem that happens. Absolutely. People want something to mean something. So they're like, this is this. And so now your viewpoint is skewed. Whatever you were originally going to think has been clouded by this person's comment. Comments, so yeah. you don't even know yourself if you were going to see it for what it is or if you were going to come to that realisation. Yeah. And I think that's the problem we have, that people kind of put an idea out and don't allow you to digest it for yourself. And then be like, this is how own. I think. Mm -hmm. This is what I feel. It's like, no, these are the rules. I think it can only be X or Y. And again, with wokeness, I hate that word now. Yeah. It's become this dichotomy of a random person's going to decide what is or isn't work. And it's like, uh, your opinion is otherwise not that relevant in my day to day. <laughs> so. Yeah, absolutely. And how do you feel about it? Because I feel like, with me, it was like when I saw the picture and I was like, I, I didn't see it like that. Mm. But at the same time, I can see where somebody, like you say, when you take it out of context and you don't know the backstory and all of that, it's easy to just make that assumption, but I feel like that assumption comes from a place of internalized how people right. automatically yeah, see yeah, dark skinned yeah. women. <laughs> because if that was a light skinned woman, and I hate doing that, but it's like if that was a light skinned woman, would we have seen it as as that? Would would people have seen it as someone serving someone? Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? And and this is where colorism comes into play, and that will always come into play in any form within our community. But it's like I think the issue it's, is it's the projection, like you mentioned, yeah. it's projection. And it's an internalized, almost how you view dark skinned women is how you're going to 
um, describe, describe that image. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And, and I feel like that's what happened with that particular, particular thing. thing. I think in general, like in, even with the whole wokeness thing, when you become aware of something, you kind of start to look for it. Not look for it everywhere because these kind of like underlying issues are prevalent like wherever you go. Mm. But it is just a thing of, I think there's like a space and time where people receive the information, digest it, and then regurgitate it for a while until like it sits properly in them. Mm. So I think that's just something that's happening, especially like with, um, I guess, on social media where we have these kind of discussions. Yeah. People are kind of just like pushing certain rhetoric out constantly mm. without actually just taking a second to look at what's mm. in front of them and then create their own opinion which opinion. is what yeah. you were saying earlier absolutely so. um and even like the whole being woke thing and the whole ho set thing and all of all of that that whole world <laughs> in itself <laughs> has just become a bit it's just it's becoming it's not what it was it's not like for the purposes of it initially was a thing where okay you want people to become more aware of of their environment and you know have a a deeper understanding of certain things but now it's just become a thing where any opportunity someone has they just want to be screaming who can shout the loudest (laughs) yeah who can shout the loudest who can who can do you and it's it's no longer an authentic thing it's no longer a thing where i've had an awakening and i see (laughs) things for what they are and i'm not seeing it from the the white man's perspective anymore i'm seeing it from okay i'm seeing it for what it is and it's now just become a thing of like you said who's who can make the most noise about a thing and, it, and it's becoming time and it's taken away from what it is because yeah. it's i think like being woke quote unquote is more of a personal thing mm. as a lot of my friends would refer to me as work i would never refer to myself as that like i have friends i'll be like oh when i'm coming to like a, a social setting or something mm. and there's white people there they'll be like oh they'll be like oh woman's yes yeah <laughs> but it's, it's really and i don't i wouldn't that's just me that's just how i this is how i'm navigating these spaces and this is how i'm dealing with that and i look at it from a out of the box kind of way so you know you'd go into these things and people are already like oh no the you know some people with the whole oh white people are not you shouldn't call white people racist till they do something well i go into it with a thing where I'm not going to, you're not my ally until you prove to me you're an right. ally kind of thing. Does that make sense? Um, and that's just my take on it. And I'm, I'm not one to be like, oh, it has to be like this and it has to be like this. And But people have just, they've turned it into something that's not anymore. And it's, it's becoming tiring now because it's, yeah. it's all a performance. And it's, it's with more than, and it's not even just about pro-blackness. It's in other kind of activisms as well with like the whole feminist movement. And, you know, there was a whole thing that came up with the gentleman that was, Hailing his king, queens, but not really hailing his queens. Oh gosh. <laughs> and do you get what I mean? And it's there's so many everything. A lot of things now have become performative. It's not just it's it's all kinds of even like with veganism. Like right. there's some people that it's really just a performance. They're just out here doing eat your vegetables, they do this, and meanwhile they're they're boxing up hamburgers behind <laughs> those doors. They have secret <laughs> night meetings and they're eating meat. Don't let them lie to you. Um, I know this because I've kind of been that person where it's like, yeah, I don't eat meat, but I know I'll go home and I'll cook myself some salmon. This is when when I was in the early stages of like trying to figure it out. But this was because it was a thing where people were just throwing the term vegan at me. But that was not even what it was. But it was the easiest way to explain it. So obviously, when I'm outside, I'm, I'm trying to do one way. And when I'm at home, I'm I'm whipping up my sweet chili salmon and I'm boxing it off with my jollof rice. But it's so with everything, there's always a performance. But it's like feel like we have to get to a place where we can just call whatever we're doing what we're doing and just own it say it with your chest mm-hmm. and just keep it moving but too many people care about what everyone else thinks and their opinions are a sum of i mean for me my problem is that um people's opinions have become sound bites and it will sound nice yeah. mm. so people will tweet things or say things that are like oh bare people don't think this is the right thing to say so mm. i look good uh-huh. i kind of reached this point of like if we need to turn on you're being woke Personally, I, I had insomnia, I was exhausted, I crashed, and now I've had enough. <laughs> My thinking is that the way I look at life is to be woke, whatever you want to mm. turn want to use, I think the term is like try it at this point. For me, it's just a self-awareness. And the whole point is it stems from self. It's not me being like, I'm the woke person in the room and I want to tell you and you and you and you why you're not. It's like, okay, I come to this place where I've learned X thing about myself and about the world I operate in. These are the conscious decisions I'm going to make going mm. forward. Mm. I might tell you about them if they if you ask, 
but I'm not going to beat you over the head with it, nor am I going to say that I am better or wiser or more informed than you, because that's when you get to the point where you have people who don't even live in experience telling you what that experience is actually like, mm -hmm. and when someone who has that experience speaks up, they're like, yeah, but you didn't know this, this, and this, and it's like, okay, but they're the actual person yeah. who's in question. So I think for me, it's about consistently unlearning stuff that is just really poor behavior, or yeah. um, I had a discussion on my podcast last week actually about femininity and the discussion was about black men and this term black men having male privilege etc mm -hmm. and the fact that we can't actually divorce being a black man like the black and the man, man. man. Yeah. same way with you know the blackness and womanhood we can't divorce yeah. so in so much as privilege is the word that would make sense it's more that they benefit from the existing structure of patriarchy and also they benefit from and sometimes per perpetuate yeah. misogyny which is how it affects us as yeah. black women um, um, but one thing I noticed, that, well, that I admitted when one of the guests was speaking, who is like, often though, what women, regardless of race, um, maybe black women too subconsciously do is, in a scenario, you kind of will strip your partner of the ability to be vulnerable. Oh yeah, um, I was listening to that and I was cackling. So I'm I did also, so basically, like, I'd be walking down the street and say like someone barges into you, suddenly out of nowhere you grow wings and you're like, well fuck you, let's fight. And then it's because you know you have like a male presence next yeah, to you. And you, maybe subconsciously you know how a black man is gonna be viewed standing next to you. But at the same time, if he gets his head tap danced on, you're the one who's like, <laughs> But at the same time, but it's also that same thing of like, ah, oh, okay, babe, I'm sorry, but then you have to assign that like you kind of cause that scenario. But I mm. think you know, everyone is afraid of being wrong. I think this is what the point we've gotten to. And being woke now is about who can say the most right things. For me, I'm very okay and very comfortable being wrong. If someone's be like, mm, that's not accurate, I'm like, cool, tell me why. I think we need to also get to a point where when we discuss with each other, it's not about I'm gonna top trump you yeah. and say like the rudest thing possible so everyone can drag you or whatever. Yeah. Dragging and cancel culture having is the, the worst thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think once we get past that point and people just actually want a the dialogue, then we might go somewhere. But I think people are tired of being woke and this is my hot take mm. because it stopped making me rich. I think the cutoff point for making me wealthy is being woke kind of ended like 2015, 2016. Mm. So because you can now no longer be rich from being mm. woke, mm. that's when people are tired of it. Not because yeah. they're like, oh, I'm sick of hearing about this and this and this or whatever. Yeah. It's like, no, because now you can't have your you're comma. Getting you're, you're not getting, getting checks. checks. The time to get your checks has long since passed. Like D-Ray's out here in his puffer vest in Hollywood doing his thing, all right, cool, hot at you. <laughs> um, so he's getting his checks as he needs to. Yeah. Everyone else who may have wanted that, yeah. can't now. Yeah. So, so it's all, it, that's, that's really it. Because a lot of um, this, whole activism thing. I think a lot of it stems from some of them, some activists as they call themselves. I call myself an activist. I call myself a melanin activist. And I advocate and I am a very active melanin. Like anything that's black, whether it be human or something else, I'm all for it. Like, like it's like said, I'm rooting for all things black. So you tell me something of a black owned business, you tell me anything. It's like there was a similar discussion in regards to how when things are regarded as too black, they they they're now they lose value. Uh, like um, yeah, like mm, mm, Bali's bait and all of that nonsense. And it's like I'm I'm the complete opposite of that, and and that's where I think my sense of this is what I advocate for, and this is what I'm pushing for. Like the minute I hear something is for dark skinned women or something is for black women, or I'm on it. I don't care. I don't. I don't care what anyone else thinks. I don't care that someone else thinks. Oh yeah, but they're all like this, them, or whatever, because that is what I feel like I am actively pushing. But people are not doing that because it's what they care about now. It's it's because of checks. So people are are going on platforms or doing things and just because of their checks. As long as their bank accounts are lined at the end of the day, they're no longer really. It's no longer about the what they're advocating for is it's about they're, they're advocating for their bank accounts but they're talking <laughs> yeah they're, they're people are now advocating for their bank accounts and they're steering so far left off of the topic that people initially were interested or were following them or were you know keeping up with them for and it's and it's painful to watch because it's like wow well, once upon a time you were that person and now you're just what are you doing? And I think the other issue is people forget what acquiring all this information and unlearning things is for. Mm. It should, I mean, I'm at a point where like I can't constantly educate people in a certain mm -hmm. arena mm -hmm. only because like it becomes extremely dangerous for me. Anyway, so, um, but 
people when they start using that certain buzzword and terminology mm. get to the point where they just throw them at people who they feel are at a lower like understanding yeah. to them and then it becomes like a classist issue whereas it's just supposed to be something that you can pass on and break down to somebody else and who might not know these words exactly. and it's just like i don't see why it's so important for you to be that be all and know all and like yeah push people down just because of something you learned like two minutes ago mm. and it's very clear that you don't really understand, understand what you're talking it. about mm-hmm. because you become like defensive when someone just asks a simple question and that's part of the reason why now i kind of just like back away on certain and i feel like that happens because if you look at it if, if you're asking if someone has broken something down to you and they've used like all these terminology mm. yeah, and then you ask them a question that um you know that's question in your yeah yeah um and it's a genuine question of you wanting to get a better understanding they can't answer that question because one like you said they don't know it yeah so you can't explain something to someone you don't know when all you're doing is regurgitating something mm-hmm. you like you said you've read so then you're you're not really i feel like being an activist of anything for anything you have to be willing to teach other people like More. that is why you're that yeah. person there or even bring somebody else in who might be able to like to say yeah, their experience yeah exactly but then it's no longer that now it's now a thing where i want to go there say what i read or whatever and, and bounce mm. but then that means everyone else you've just spoken to has not learned anything so nothing can change it's like so a what are you contest it's like, <laughs> look how much <laughs> look how much i can like regurgitate from wikipedia um, I'm so bright and amazing. I think for me, one thing I'm learning is the smartest person doesn't need the biggest words. Right. They can give you the most complex concepts in the simplest the term. term yeah. And often, what people do is they come across a term like intersectionality. It sounds like, okay, I can use this term to tell this person why they're wrong and I'm right. Mm. And that's not how it's supposed to be used. Mm. And because this other person either doesn't have the tools to understand what is being said and you just about do yourself, yeah. then it becomes this element of where they're like shadow boxing a ghost because they're trying to ask questions but they don't know what they need to be asking mm. and you're already on the offense like no you're wrong no you're this no you're that and a lot of learning just comes from conversation and you have to be willing to have conversations with a people you may not agree with and b you have to understand that people may surprise you you may think you have like you know all the information what you don't want is yeah. to move like i'm einstein i know the world and someone who actually knows something then starts talking and you look stupid right so it's better to not be presumptuous when you talk to people talk them in respect and also, if they say to you, what does this mean, and you don't know, it's okay to be like, I don't I'm know. know. I'm the biggest yeah. advocate for that. Literally, if I'm having a conversation, like, and they're like, oh, what do you mean by that? I'm like, no, honestly, I actually don't know. I've read it somewhere, <laughs> but I don't know. And we would pull out a phone or whatever and Google. The amount of times I've been at, like, talks and things, and someone has said a word, and I'm there, like, <laughs> I'm trying to, one, get the definition, understand yeah. if they're using it in the right, right context, context. Yeah. see what, mm-hmm. trying to get an understand. But people are not ready to do that. Um, like you said, like the best way for other people to learn is just from having conversations. But I feel like no one really wants to have conversations no. because they can't have conversations it's because the all they have is what they've read. So then when it now gets to actually conversing about it and just being open, they feel attacked, they feel yeah. under pressure. So then they now end up on the defense and it's like, right, what's the argument? I, I just want to This, is, this is what I'm saying. Like yeah. when you, it's like, um, I don't know if any of you guys said language or like GCSE or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know when you have to memorise that script to write out for your exam? <laughs> you don't actually know what it means, but you just memorise it, right? You're like, okay, yeah. I know this is a mm-hmm. word, like je mange, all right, cool, I'm going to write all this out. You don't, no, you can't translate it, everyone asks mm-hmm. you to, but you can regurgitate it. It's much the same. It's like if, now someone now asked me, said to me, oh, um, so what did you like about your breakfast? And I was talking about my breakfast, I'm like, why are you asking that dumb question? I don't know, and the answer is, I don't actually understand what I was saying. Yeah. It just sounded right. Someone who knows what well, understands French, for example, is now going to ask me a question because yeah. to them they're like, oh, okay, yeah. this is what this means. Okay. And now I'm on the defensive because I'm like, okay, I actually don't know what any of it means. I just negotiated it. Now I'm looking stupid, so I have to make them look stupid. And this becomes this cycle of like, like it's pointless. And with whiteness, I feel like at this point, if you're not quite aware of the world is fucked, then I don't really know how to help you. Um, obviously because it is what it is um, it really is but i, 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 I agree. can't like we can't baby people anymore i think what it should be is okay cool the world is a mess you have an active choice of individuals to decide what you want to do to make it better or what you're going to learn or unlearn oh, yeah. so that your presence around other people isn't oppressive in any one sense yeah. because as much as we don't want to admit it even if in one regard you may be the, on the lowest rung of society in another way you're still going to have some level of privilege yeah. you need to understand how that is even amongst people who look just like you mm-hmm. 
So I think, especially amongst black people interracially, I think we need to get past this thing of like, because you're black and I'm black, we're going to understand everything each other goes through. That's not the way it is. So, I, and I also think that level of over familiarity by way of race or just proximity from, for example, black London being so small mm. means that when people talk to you, there's sometimes a lack of respect because maybe they've followed you for a couple of years, they feel like they know yeah, you, yeah. but you can't presume those things yeah. because yeah. you don't know anyone. Don't know anyone. So they pull up outside your house, suddenly you don't know them anymore. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I agree. I feel like, yeah, the whole thing. I feel like it has become a trend. Th- th- this is why I worded it that way because mm. my honest, honest opinion is, is being an activist and being woke and all of this has really just become a means to to checks for some people. And it's like w- that's that that's defeating the purpose of mm. why this whole thing started. And I feel like people are failing to realize that to be woke, like the whole term, comes from a self awakening as opposed to you know, shouting at everyone else and we need to take certain things just back to basics mm. and have conversations like this. Talk to people that are outside of your comfort zone mm. because I feel like I've unlearned so much, like especially in regards to like um homopho- my, like homophobic views and even I was a bit of a fat fat phobe or how mm. however you say it. I was very anti fat people but it was like it was more of a it was a projection thing mm-hmm. so it's very important to unlearn certain things and, and get a better understanding go out of your comfort zone be in these spaces and, and try and speak to people understand what they're going through or what they're doing and and learn from that and keep it moving if you if you've got people around you that you can pass it on to okay but people trying to force feed people things yeah. is, is is becoming stupid and they're not they're force feeding in a way and it's like it gets us point where if you're being fed something but they're force feeding you no longer like when you're a baby you, yeah. you don't you close your mouth in it you're mm. not taking it in all right if that's the case if this is how you people are going to be i don't want to learn about it and then no one no one moves forward yeah. everyone's just stagnant we're all just there looking at each other like crabs in a bucket mm-hmm. it's like, wow. plus sometimes the information that people are passing out is very dangerous like mm-hmm. even when you're talking about the whole fat phobia thing um being po- um body positive seems like it's such a great idea but a lot of these people who are in that position yeah. and have the platform and have the followers aren't passing out information that is actually helpful to the people who might be going through mm-hmm. for example bullying and fat shaming and stuff like that and then it just continues this cycle of them being dependent on this like benevolent figure mm-hmm. who has no responsibility to them and makes that very clear because you're not passing again you're not passing on that and another thing is i feel like some of these things are very one-sided mm. I'm going to explain why I say that. So in terms of like my issue with fat people in the past was more of a thing where it was a projection thing. I was always a skinny twig person. So it was always a thing where I just, I've realized now that it was more of a thing where I wanted to be bigger. So I mocked big people, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But then it's a thing where, and this is what, a lot of these things are very one-sided. So when people are advocating for certain things, like it's so like selfishness. yeah so like the body positivity movement um i've seen a lot of people be like oh but it's skinny people saying this and this that but skinny people have body issues too, too if that yeah. makes sense yeah. and people don't don't talk about that they're like certain movements like when it comes to like like i had body issues based on my belly but that was from like my pregnancy and, right. and all of that stuff but it's like if i was to go out there and be like oh i want to put out a post and things and I've seen it about like someone will say something like, "Oh yeah, but you're only you, you can post this picture because you're, you're skinny and you're yeah. little." Yeah. Yeah. Like but it's like, strange. but it's like this person actually has that had that is. insecurity and they're happy about it, and they're there to drag them back. Doesn't that negate from what this, is, this is what I mean about the top trumps thing. thing? Like, so people do this thing where they're like, "Oh yeah, you're skinny, but I'm fat, so like you can't have been truly insecure." Yeah. And I think for me, I definitely had some a uh, fat phobic phase in the past. I guess being I'm a very slim person, I think for me, my mind be rooted in the fact that like, I'm aware that in so much as in the, it was like a double edged thing where mm. by way of like European beauty standards, like body wise, I'm oh, great, I'm perfect. Good. But within the black community, I'm not. I'm not. Mm. And then okay. aesthetically, I may be seen as like pretty within the black community, but in the world, I'm not. So mm-hmm. it's like you have the other way around. Mm-hmm. So you've got the body that in theory you need, but not the face. And then now you get to the point where it's like, okay, but they expect you to have this body now. Before mm-hmm. it was like, oh, you could be skinny and black, and they're like, oh, your figure's so nice. And now it's like, where's your bum? Where's your whatever? Mm-hmm. 
And so everyone has their own insecurities and that's not to validate any of the Anybody things we said or the mm-hmm. things that hurt other people. It's more an understanding that when we want to discuss the different things that people choose to do or the way people act out, we have to understand that people are all sort of under the same umbrella of that is patriarchy, misogyny, mm-hmm. everything else, and we're going to react to it in different ways. Mm-hmm. So when we're unlearning, there's going to be from different points. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of people who love to do things they're like, well, I never did this or this or this or this or this. But, but there's a lot of things to factor <laughs> in. Firstly, you're 18, so yeah. you didn't have Twitter back yeah. then. Right. Secondly, you've been brought up in an age where people, cancel culture is so rife, even if you wanted to say some madness, you probably just said it in person to your friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thirdly, you could have just deleted tweets. Yeah. Doing so much, you're like, I was never this, that, and the other. The truth is, you probably were, or you probably were oppressive in another way, but because it wasn't written down to permanently be looked yeah. at, you can pretend you can, and be like, I'm a saint and I know everything. It, yeah. But there's not one person on this planet, not one, who is not problematic. Mm-hmm in some I'm way. I'm a troll. I'm a, I'm a big troll, but I say, oh, I keep it all in my yeah, head. I don't yeah. even tell people. I just, I, I, I see, to myself. exactly, <laughs> I see it and I'm like, <laughs> and I keep it moving because in my head, I'm like, I could open my mouth and just be that, that person, but yeah. that's not going to do anything for me and that's not going to do for any, anything for anyone around me. So what's the point? Um, and that, that's just, yeah, that's really it. So I think we can agree that workness has become a trend yeah. and activists out there need to, need to one be true to what you're being an activist towards and mm-hmm. secondly just keep it 100 more with yourself than anyone else because i mm-hmm. feel like when you can keep it 100 with yourself you don't rely on the the opinions or the 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 you know other people going oh yeah well done and all of that yeah. like all of that don't mean nothing to you if you know you're true to what you're doing exactly which a lot of people don't so they do it and then they get that boost from someone else yeah. saying, oh, I'm so proud of you, oh, you're great, you're amazing, oh, we need someone. Like, realistically, be true to you and everything else is irrelevant. Like, true. I've, I've gotten to a stage where I don't even listen to opinions no more. Like, however you feel about me, that's your personal that's problem. problem. Like, I love make, that <laughs> take that <laughs> to the altar, to the altar <laughs> and keep it there. And yeah. no business. But, um, yeah, I feel like this has been a great conversation. It has a great food. <laughs> Oh, this is what I like to hear. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna rate the food um at a ten and Allegria gives it a Oh sorry you're waiting for me. <laughs> don't get there. A comfortable nine point eight. Wow. Sis, what's the zero point two? Because I want you to spy for something. Okay, I like you. <laughs> she always wants to see a better me, okay. And Nunya? I think I'll agree since it's my first time eating how do I say it? Moi moi. Moi moi, yeah. Yeah, it's my first time eating it. And I'm pleasantly surprised. Okay, I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right, the zero point two is because she wants me to aspire to be better, not because there was anything wrong with the food. So technically, it's a ten. <laughs> <laughs> took out the zero point two yeah. in anticipation for the next time she comes, where she'll be eating something better. So I just say, um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on Cook Talks. We hope one you've enjoyed the conversation. Secondly, you enjoyed the whole cooking thing.